morning. Good morning, Kathy Banks. My name is Kathy Banks. I'm um, a member of the choir and a chair of M&P. A very special welcome to all of you for being here today and the week before Sunday. And I'm so glad you took the time to celebrate with us the Christmas season, those of you who are online as well, and for those of you for your presence in the sanctuary, thank you. Very special welcome to Caroline and Reverend Abiel. <laughs> We're very, very, very pleased to have you back worshiping with us. We missed you. But Glenn did a fine job filling in for you, and thank you, Glenn. Okay. Um, I have been asked uh, by the family to ask you to keep the McClarty family in your hearts. Marjorie um, is in hospice care, and so we, we keep her in our thoughts and minds and the whole family. For those of you who ordered cheese products, uh, there's still one per one, two people to pick up their cheese in the uh, far parlor fridge, so if you haven't done that already, there's just one person that needs to pay me. Other than that, we had a profit of almost $1,000, um, and we topped that up, and $1,000 will be going to the food bank. Thank you. Um, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Choir security for 2023, there's a new... Um, schedule right by the back door if you feel that you can give two hours from 4 30 till shortly after six an hour and a half basically on a thursday evening to help with choir security please feel free to sign up in the um on the sheet and i will check it and get back to you and i will remind you to, of when to come so please do think about it there um, the new photo directory, just keep these dates back in the back of your mind. This is for all Wesley Knox families, will be March 29 to April 6th. Um, please read your newsletter about building closures over the holiday season. You might arrive and the building is closed. The dates are posted there. Upcoming services, check in your bulletin. There, um, Yes, the times are correct there. There was a, a mistake on uh, the 24th. There were like three services on December 25th. But if it's just one little mistake, you know, that, that's Arlene did that, and she apologizes. But anyhow, it's the 24th. We're the two services on the 24th. There is a service on the 25th and another one on January the 1st. Is there anyone else who has... Oh, I see people all lined up here. This is good. Mike. Yeah, Mike Beck on behalf of the Spiritual Life Committee, uh, we uh, got to thank everybody who brought some white gifts. They were delivered to uh, Lifespin and were gratefully received. Their Lifespin is an organization that we have supported in the past, and they were very, very grateful for what we were able to bring. David? Good morning. I uh, just wanted to point out something for you to put in your calendars for uh, next year, January 14th and 15th, that weekend. Um, on the 14th, there's going to be a fundraiser for the Afghan refugee family, uh, a mile-long putting uh, marathon, and on, on the Sunday after church, there'll be a chili luncheon that uh, everybody is welcome to. And uh, that'll be, information will be next week in the bulletin, but I just wanted to give you the heads up. And the other thing is that uh, tonight on uh, Global uh, National News, there's going to be a story uh, about the uh, Afghan situation. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Okay, I failed to mention that if you did not receive a newsletter um, via email, um, in the email blast. There are copies of the, of the newsletter at the side. And please join us for coffee and conversation down um, after the service downstairs. You can exit by both doors on the side here, and there is a lift available for you if you need. Could we gather our hearts and minds to come before God in worship? Please join me in the call to worship. I'm sorry, the lighting of the candle. Oh, there we go. Dan, you're up. Jumping. 
I was going to do it when I, where my next time was going to happen. Um, so we acknowledge that uh, this land that we're on, that Wesley Knox performs its ministries, is the traditional territories of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lenape, Wak, and Attawandrans peoples. And we uh, wrestle and acknowledge our relationship and troubled past with our indigenous siblings. We also light our Christ candle to remind us when we gather for worship, our friend Christ, God, the Spirit is with us. Friends, the light of Christ. Our call to worship. Oh God, hear our call. And come to Restore us, O oh God. For we know that new life is coming. Let your hand be upon him in blessing. He will be God with us. Give us life.
Wow. Please join me in the opening prayer. Holy One, you send us new life in so many forms. Open our minds that we may recognize it. Open our hearts that we may so receive it. Open our bodies that we may embrace it. Open our souls that we may have it. Open us this day and all days. Amen. We gather. Love abundant overflows, pouring into our mist. Rise, take heart, and love deeply. The glow of God the divine lover lightens our hearts. We are together, never alone. Gathered on this fourth Sunday at Advent, we witness to God's deep love and tender compassion for the whole world. Our witness is love. God's love comes to ground, and like an ark, large to hold, embrace, heal, and restore. We pray. God, who never ceases to love, kindle our hearts that we may burn anew with your love. Bless us with the flame of lively living and believing. Take our words and release them to speak of you. Take our minds and broaden them to reflect your overflowing love. Take our hearts and set them alight with your desire for goodness. In the name of the one full of love. Amen. Some good young people, if they wish to come up to the front. 
Oh, so good to see you. All right. Have you ever, have I shown you my favorite coffee mug? Probably. What, what is this coffee mug of? Star Wars. Star Wars, my favorite coffee mug. Star Wars, I bought it at Disney Parks in 2020. My last vacation. It's my favorite mug because I'm a big Star Wars fan. And part of that is because there's a lot of parallels, similarities, things that are the same, between the Star Wars story and this Advent story and Christmas story we run into. G, can you think of something that's similar between the two stories? There's a journey involved. Who was that? Heather? Oh. <laughs> yes, there's a journey involved. They travel to find and to save. There's something about the force and how the force is used. There's a There's a dark side and a light side. We hear in our scriptures, you know, people coming out of the darkness to a great light. Uh, good and not so good. Um, and, and I really like the Star Wars stories because, again, there's those, those things that are similar. And even in our Advent story of hope, peace, joy, and love, we can hear that all in this story. Uh, like hope, right? The very first Star Wars movie that came out before I was even born was called A New Hope. And it's all about this young boy who is going to be the Jedi to change the galaxy and save the galaxy, bring it to the light side. That kind of sound, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, I just need someone to say yes. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to show you my favorite mug and why I like it and how it connects to my stories. Yes, G. Yes, yes. We don't want to spoil that for anyone uh, that hasn't seen the Star Wars movies on who, who Darth really is. Uh, so before we go up to uh, our space, we're going to light our Christ candle to bring up to children's worship. We do have Youth Quest this morning, so the youth are welcome to go to the chapel out that door, and you'll see a bunch of wonderful teenagers. We don't have a volunteer in the nursery, so parents, if you... Uh, need a, a, a space for toys. It's up this set of stairs to that corner upstairs, and you'll have to hang out there with your kids. Uh, who wants to carry the Christ light up for children's worship? G? All right. So before we go, let's say the prayer that our friend Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we as forgive we those, those who trespass against us. us. And lead us lead not into temptation, temptation, but deliver, but deliver us, from us from evil. Your for thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory, and glory forever, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. This is Juliana. Hi. Um, so I'm going, or we're going to be reading from Psalm 80 from Voices United, page 794. Singing. Sorry. <laughs>
of Israel, hear us. You who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned amidst the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. How long will you be angry with your people's prayer? You have made a mockery of us in our neighbors. Let your hand rest on the one at your right hand, on the one you have made strong for yourself. Israel, hear us. Shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Messiah. a vine out of Egypt, you drove out the nations and planned it. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. Why then have you broken down an enclosure so that all who go by pluck its grapes? to us again, God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. As for those who set it on fire, who cut it down, may they perish at the frown of your face. Then we will never forsake you. readings from Isaiah um, 7 verses 10 to 16. Isaiah gives Ahaz the sign of Emmanuel. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz saying ask for a sign the Lord your God let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, for the young woman is with a child. She shall bear a son and shall name him an Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. Matthew 1, 18-25, the birth of Jesus the Messiah. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just when 
When he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had given birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. For the word of God in scripture among us and within us.
गुड मॉर्निंग आई वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट यू ऑल इन द नेम ऑफ जीजस क्राइस्ट एंड आई वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट ऑल दो जूम टू एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस सर्विस friends i am glad to be back i've had a hard time i had an accident and i fell and i broke two of my rib wrists but i'm back and i'm glad I miss the church very much. And Glen, thank you for leading the services. Thank you very much. This morning I just want to preach about the promise of Christmas. And the promise of Christmas is this. God is with us. And I want to begin by sharing a story about a British poet and theologian J.K. Chesterton. He was a brilliant man who could think deep thoughts and express them well. However he was also extremely absent minded and over the years he became rather notorious for getting lost he would just absolutely forget where he was supposed to be or what he was supposed to be doing on one such occasion he sent a telegram to his wife which carried these words honey it seems i'm lost again presently i am at a market harbor where ought i to be and his wife responded with a telegram with one word home <laughs> this is precisely what the classic passage in the first chapter of matthew does for us it brings us home home to the real meaning of christmas home to the most significant truth in all of the bible home to our greatest promise home for the reason we celebrate christmas namely this god is with us so friends this morning if we accept christ in our lives not even death can separate us from god and his love god is with us that's what christmas is about god is with us the great people of faith have always claimed that promise for example moses caught between pharaoh and the deep red sea believed that god was with him and he went forward and trusted god to open a way for him 
And friends, God did open a way for him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into a fiery furnace, into a hopeless situation. They felt hopeless. But the three guys believed that God is going to be with them. And my friends, God was with them. Little David, a shepherd, was faced with Goliath. How can a small boy with a sling fight a warrior, a powerful warrior? But you see, David believed that God was with him. This is what this morning scripture teaches us. This is what this morning scripture teaches us about Joseph. Joseph was engaged to be married. And all of a sudden, the tables turned. The fiancée was now pregnant. He was confused. He was troubled. He thought about what he was going to do. He thought about how he's going to leave him quietly. But friends, an angel of the Lord came and said to Joseph, Do not be afraid because what has happened is God. Mary is carrying a child of God and you will name him Jesus. And then the scripture continues. He will be Emmanuel, God with us. This is the promise of Christmas, friends. The promise of Christmas is that God is with us all the time, all the places. God is with us and God will always be with us. This morning, God is with us. We can claim that promise. First of all, when we are frightened. And I'm saying this, friends, because on the 1st of November, I was really frightened. In fact, I thought I was dying. I fell from eight steps, fell on the ground. Two things protected me, my hands. And another thing that protected me that I need to share with you is that when I was falling, remember I'm not Catholic and I was never Catholic, and I don't think I'll ever be Catholic. But however, when I was falling, something happened. A prayer came into my heart. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the womb, the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and in the time of our death. This is what saved me. 
So this morning, God is with us. If we are frightened, if we are afraid, if we are scared, God will be with us and protect us. Now, these words are the words that Jesus said all the time. Fear not, fret no more, don't be anxious, let not your hearts be troubled, don't be afraid. These are the words that Jesus spoke. So this morning I'm saying, God is with us and we can claim that promise, first of all, when we are frightened when we have fear in our hearts. All of us get frightened and scared sometimes. And Jesus in his wisdom knew that we will be scared. And this is why Jesus says to us, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, Joseph, because your fiancé has done nothing wrong. But what your fiance is carrying is a child of God. And you'll call him Emmanuel, God with us. So do not be afraid. Have comfort in your heart. Take courage. Be strong and healthy. Second, we claim the promise of God when we are lonely. We have a lot of lonely people, particularly this time. We have a lot of people who are lonely because they've lost loved ones. They're lonely. It reminds me of a lady who was lonely working more hours than she could. And one day after work, she was traveling to the train and she saw people play music, old little town of Bethlehem. She was a lonely lady. No friends, no family. She heard the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And she stopped. She stopped and thought and then remembered other verses of the hymn. Remembered other verses of the hymn. What she remembered is this, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray, cast out our sin and enter, be born in us today. This is in her loneliness, she remembered those words. Also, my friends, we are sent to work. We are given a job. Like Joseph was given a job. We are given a job. Do you remember the sermon that Brother Glenn Pearson preached on Remembrance Sunday? If I remember well, I was not here, but I watched it. He said to us as a congregation, he said to us, sign me up. Sign me up. This is what he said to us. Sign me up. Joseph was signed up because he had to do a job to take care of Jesus, to protect Jesus, to teach Jesus. He had a job to do. We, 
as Wesley Knox, we have to, a job to do. And our job is to welcome Robert, Bob, to this congregation. And work with him and love him. So that this church can grow and be strong. We have a job to do. We have a job to do to love one another. We have a job to do to care for homeless. We have a job to do to support the food bank. We do this job because God is with us. God is walking with us. God is strengthening us. And God is empowering us. So this morning, allow God to sign you up for Wesley Knox. Allow God to sign you up for Wesley Knox so that our programs can grow stronger, so that our ministries grow stronger. God with the, is with us. This is the promise of Christmas. And with that promise comes comfort, comes courage, and comes something to do. Something we need to do. This is the promise of Christmas. So this morning, friends, I just want to leave you with these words. There's something for us to do. And because there's something for us to do, then in the words of Glenn Pearson, sign me up. In life, in death, in life beyond death, we're not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
This is the time in our service where Reverend Abiel has um, started the gratitude for an attitude section. And I know maybe you picked some out of the box, did you? Did you? You'll have time to read them. <laughs> but right now, our gratitude is to Reverend Abiel. Yes, he just came back, but next Sunday or Saturday is his last time with us. And we would like to celebrate that today. There's a few people that would like to come and have a, uh, a word to say. And first person I'm going to call on is Marion Hearn. Reverend Aviel, <clears throat> I am very grateful that you are here with us this Sunday. Thank you for being here for us in 2022. Your ministry, guidance, and friendship have kept us focused and strong at Wesley Knox during another year of uncertainty. You've encouraged us to have faith that we would soon have a permanent minister and that is happening. Our prayers have been answered. Your leadership has been a joy and a blessing. During your stay, some of us has learned that you have a collection of turtles. As a small token of our appreciation, the M&P committee has a gift of a soapstone turtle to add to your collection as a reminder of your time with us. It was made for you by an artist in Gravenhurst, Ontario, who has worked with Soapstone for 50 years. We wish you and Caroline a safe trip to Africa and all the best in your future endeavors. It is a pleasure to lovingly present to you this little gift. Do <laughs> you want me to open it? Yes, please. Oh, my. It's a turtle. <laughs> For those who do not know me, I collect turtles from all. Where does it come from? It comes from Gravenhurst. There, there's a what brochure in here that tells, tells you all about it. Okay, it tells you. you who made it and how to look after it. <laughs> <laughs> because if you get some little scratches, it can be mended. <laughs> thank you so much. So, thank you for being with us. Thank you. For, the, for those of you who didn't hear Reverend Abiel, he said they didn't tell us. No, we didn't. You didn't know that. Next person I'd like to call upon is John McFall. Today we celebrate our relationship with Abiel. Back in August 2021, Reverend Perry Mitchell completed his tenure at Wesley Knox as our supply minister. During the fall of 2021, Glenn Pearson and Chris Mortlock filled in to deliver the messages during our worship services, and we are very fortunate to have these gentlemen in our midst. A search committee, consisting of most of the search committee that brought Perry to our midst, convened to look for a supply minister to cover our needs until a permanent minister could be found. As a member of the search committee, I took the opportunity to contact Abiel, who I had met some years previously, and who at the time was enjoying a brief retirement. The search committee met several times with Abiel over Zoom and in person, and it was an easy decision 
to contact, contract with Abiel and bring him to Wesley Knox. His first service was a communion service held on December 5, 2021. At least we were meeting in person at the time, and his sermon was titled, Is the Room for a Prophet? Since then, we have benefited in hearing Abiel's message of how Jesus wants us to live with one another and what we are asked to do as Christians in 2022. Abiel soon realized that reconnecting our con congregants with Wesley Knox was a priority, even though in-person visits were not advisable in many cases. Assisted by Richard Yake and Jane Fenwick, he persisted in his New Beginnings project, which involved calling people, many people, over 160 people, often with Carolyn joining the, in the conversation. Abiel has consistently reminded us that Wesley Knox will survive the pandemic and can once again be a strong presence in Wortley Village. His quiet confidence has helped us face whatever trials have come our way. This was particularly evident as we suffered a setback in landing a new permanent minister. On many occasions, Abiel has reminded me that he will not abandon Wesley Knox and that he will see us through to the time when we have engaged a permanent minister. He has worked hard with our pastoral care team to make sure we supported the congregation through the difficult times. The time is soon approaching when we will welcome our new minister. But today, we say a huge thank you to Abiel and Carolyn for their leadership, pastoral care, and friendship. We will miss the drumming. It is comforting that we will have a friend in high places as Abiel takes over as president of the Antler River Watershed Regional Council in May. His retirement will be hard to come by, even with Carolyn's encouragement. Following our service, we will enjoy our traditional process of having a cake or two downstairs, and there will be cards of best wishes for Abiel for you to sign. At this point, I want to present a gift to Abiel on behalf of the congregation. And Jane Roy, if I could ask you to come and assist me in the task. This needs a prop. For those of you that can't see, it's a painting. Um, <laughs> it's, um, I'm not sure where the idea came from, um, but the turtle and the fact that it's a soapstone really represents Canada and represents, obviously, Abiel and his passions from here. But of course, Abiel comes from across the pond. Um, and the idea was born in terms of something, giving him something that really represented where he came from. Um, we had a lot of discussions, but it was actually Caroline who was able to tell us what was most meaningful to, to Abiel, and that would be a leopard, in terms of what, it's, um, what it represents. Um, are you Zulu or Kozo? I'm sorry. You're, are you Zulu or are you Kozo? I'm Kozo. Kozo, okay. Um, Abiel is a Kozo from South Africa. <laughs> and, and a leopard means, in that culture, it means honor, it means nobility, and it means courage. Um, people of tribesmen of nobility and of high standing wear leopard skins, and we just wanted to represent and we wanted to say thank you for all that you've done. So thank you. We are so fortunate to have Jane in our midst, adding her wonderful talents in such a memorable way. Now, Abiel, we have one more gift for you, and that the choir would like to sing a song for you. So we are going to sing a Celtic prayer by Barry Peters.
Well, my friends, I have some cards for that I need to read. The first card says, I'm grateful for the fact that I did not burn the church when I lit the Christ candle. <laughs> I'm grateful for snow because it lets me make snow people. I'm grateful for the Christ Christmas pageant. Well, and I'm grateful. Oh, I can't read this. Our family healthy and happy. This is holiday season. I'm grateful for the hard work Dan and the kids put into the get ready for pageant. And I'm thankful to have our family together this morning with Reverend Abiel celebrating. Thankful for the spirit of Christmas. Well, friends, I have to pay my gratitude to the church, to Wesley Knox. First of all, I just want to pay tribute to pastoral care. And I want to say to you, pastoral care at Wesley Knox is alive and well. When I was frightened, in the basement of a home that I lived in, having fallen and broken arms. I got a phone call from Eileen, who I had informed that I'm not going to come to work because I can't drive. And Eileen contacted Pastoral Care and they sent me Linda. Well, I can tell you about Linda. She's a tough cookie. She took me to the hospital and she stayed with me at the hospital and she asked the doctor questions. She stayed with me for all the times I went to hospital. She gave me pastoral care. And I also have to thank Ron Olson for bringing my car home because I had left my car. Thank you so much. And I know that Linda didn't want me to talk about her this way. But Linda, as you know, I'm kind of stubborn, right? So th thank you for all the things you've done. I want to thank the Leadership Council for their support. I want to thank MP MPMB for their support. I want to thank the many cards and prayers that I've received. Wonderful cards. Particularly the Sunday school cards touched my heart deeply. And I want to thank my wife Caroline for the support she gave. She has been with me for 49 years and she has been caring for me all the time. Lily, thank you very much for your care. And I also want to thank Eileen and she's not here, our secretary. She's the best. Thank you so much for all the prayers that you did for me. 
and thank you for all the gifts that I've received today, particularly this one. Oh, and the title. Thank you. Let us now accept our offerings as we thank God. Holy One, we bring before you our gifts to support Wesley Knox and our community. We ask you this morning to bless these gifts. We ask you this morning to bless us. We ask this you this morning to honor that you are with us all the time. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now say prayers for the people this morning. Let us just spend a few moments of silence as we reflect on the words God with us, as we reflect on the words that God is sending us to do God's work for him. Holy One, this morning we thank you so much for all the things you do for us. This morning we thank you for Wesley Knox as a congregation. This morning we thank you for the people of this church and the members of this church. This morning we thank you for the music on this church. And we ask you to bless us as always. Holy One, this morning we pray and thank you for our youth and our children, for the pageant they displayed last week, 
this morning, we thank you that you have given us a new minister, Bob, who's going to join us. Thank you for leading him here. And we welcome him in open hands. We pray for the lonely. We pray for those experiencing sorrow. We pray for those experiencing sadness. This morning we pray for all those efforts of helping the homeless. Hear our prayer, Lord. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen.